Do I have to get ready for this video? Do you ever look around and think, how am I ever going to get my home where I want it to be? How do I pick a paint color? How do I even start the design process? Hello friends, welcome back. I'm Lindsay, an interior stylist and teacher, here to help you create a home you truly love. In today's video, I'm answering my subscribers' biggest interior design questions. I got some great ones recently, put out some little notes on Instagram and my YouTube community page asking for a few more, and wow, did you guys deliver? I'm so excited to share my best advice. Let's do this. Our first question comes from Kristen via my YouTube community page. I'll link that down below in case you're missing the fun over there. I like to share polls and ask you guys questions about what videos you'd like to see. Kristen asks, I am trying to brighten my house up and need help. In the past, we have purchased all dark furniture, dark couches, dark tables, etc. I, of course, can't afford to replace everything all at once. Who can, Kristen? None of us can. In my living room. So what are some affordable ways that I can brighten up the space a little without going broke. <laughs> I'm hoping that I can really help you with this question. And I know that you're not alone, Kristen. I was in this exact same position years ago when I was really at a turning point with my own design. I had a brown sectional sofa, brown chair and a half, an ottoman that took up a huge amount of my living room floor space, brown and cream colored area rug, brown and blue textiles on the windows, pillows, blankets, brown, brown, brown led to a sad, dark room. Sound familiar? I know I'm not the only person who's done this and a lot of times when we find a neutral that we really like, we can a little go overboard without adding in enough color or contrast to balance the space out. So I have a few ideas for how you can brighten up your space. It probably goes without saying that going for a lighter or white paint color is a great choice to add a lot of brightness to even a dreary space. I would definitely add some white flowing drapery hung as close to the ceiling as possible and hang drapery a little wider than the actual window as well so that when you open the windows, you're gonna get a lot more light pouring in, but you still have that heightening effect and of course, floor coverings. Even if you have a dark stain on your hardwood or maybe a dark tile or other some such dark floor element, changing out a darker toned area rug for a lighter toned or mid tone area rug can bounce a little bit more light around the space and hopefully save you from replacing all your furniture. If you're going to invest in any new furniture, I would highly suggest saving for the perfect lighter, brighter, and totally functional sofa. Whether you're going for a sectional or a traditional three-seater or two-seater sofa, going for a lighter neutral tone in a performance fabric with an overall aesthetic that matches your design style is going to instantly change change the room. Next, if you're trying to make things feel light and bright, focus on a lighting plan. Really take a look at your overhead lighting. Think about putting it maybe on a dimmer switch. You might consider upgrading your ceiling fixture maybe to a multi-arm fixture like I'm showing here or something that fits your design style. Remember, the more bulbs in an overhead fixture, the brighter the overall room is going to appear. The other thing you can do is spread table lamps around the room and maybe one concentrated floor lamp to maximize the light and how it pools in different areas. And then my last uh, possible thing to consider is adding picture lights. So if you're an art lover like me, you might want to add a little bit more highlight and ambiance in the evening by turning on a picture light, whether that's in a hallway or in the living room like you're speaking about here. As I say every day in my second grade classroom, we're all teachers and we're all learners here. So if you have some great advice for this or any other question I'm sharing in today's video, make sure to share your best tips in the comments down below so we can check them out. Our next question comes from Kelly via my YouTube community page. Kelly asks, Hi Lindsay, my living room walls are a medium beige and I had thought to paint an accent wall in a rich brown. However, I read recently that accent walls are no longer desirable and can make a room look cheap. What are your thoughts? I have a lot of thoughts on this one. Are accent walls over? Yes and no. Painting just one dominant wall in a room, one big bold accent color was super hot in the 2010s and I think it's rampant overuse made it passe in 2022. That said, you can still create easy interest by thinking creatively in an otherwise simple space. 
Try painting the bottom half of a room about chair rail height. Even if you don't have woodwork to back up that painting decision, you really create an interesting trompe l'oeil effect that adds a lot of interest to a space all the way around the room. You can even do this with a neutral tone. I did this in our rental primary bedroom in our last house and it made such a huge impact on a budget and I did it in one afternoon. My favorite way to think differently about accent walls is to look up and paint the ceiling an interesting and bold color. Often I think we forget about about ceilings and it's a pretty important wall it follows us everywhere around our home and we don't just have to go with plain white my favorite thing to do is do an all-over color that's another great idea where you paint literally every wall trim molding even the ceiling all in one paint color it can make a room feel larger even if you choose a darker color but another way to do this is to paint the ceiling an unexpected color if the rest of your room has white walls maybe think of a bold contrasting color like a cobalt blue or an ochre on the ceiling. That could really create some depth. Another way to go might be all over wallpaper. If you find a subtle print, maybe a bicolor print in neutral shades that matches your design style, it can be a subtle texture you can add to the room or a subtle print. Remember, wallpaper doesn't have to be huge, bold, or colorful. It can be subtle, soft, and neutral. And if you're going for bold wallpaper, that's one area you might just to choose one accent wall. Especially if you're doing a self-stick wallpaper, if you get tired of the print, you can always change it out. One thing I would personally advise just to make sure that it doesn't feel out of place in a room is to make sure that the remaining three walls or however many walls you have in a room around that accent of wallpaper shares one base color. So if you have beige walls all around your room, maybe choose a wallpaper that has a beige base tone and then they layer in color around that beige so it feels like part of the rest of the room. Accent walls may be trending down now, but you never know when they're going to come back. One thing we know from studying trends over time is trends always have a way of coming back. It never ceases to amaze me how things that I thought would never come back always seem to find their way back. Oh, low rise jeans. I, I pity you. I put out a little call for questions on Instagram stories this week. So if you dropped a few in there, I'm going to answer a couple of these now. And if you're not following me over on Instagram, I like to share as much as I have time for over there, photos from different projects in our home, little snippets and clips of videos. And I always let you guys know when I'm uploading. Plus, you know, just scenes from the day-to-day -day life, uh, like this uh, random video of me trying to get back into my fitness uh, leading up to our wedding. But anyway, Sanctuary Scribe asks, how to redo my fireplace mantle and surround green granite to better fit my design? I love this question and I love green granite. I think the biggest thing I'm missing for this particular question is what's your design style? That will definitely play a major role in how you will make this feel like part of your home. For me, I could see green granite being really exciting. It might, if you have a really neutral space, that green granite might be a bold shot of color in a natural stone that fits into an organic modern design. You might just want to repaint any woodwork around it, brighten the white and really help that green granite to contrast, add some black styling, maybe some black wrought iron base on chairs or the sofa or a table to contrast. I think that's such a beautiful look. But if you are more transitional in styling, then I might recommend something totally different. So I think what's important to do is go to either Pinterest or maybe even do a Google image search and just type in your design style, like transitional design, green marble fireplace facade and see what pops up. You never know. You might come up with some great rooms, see what other homeowners did with a similar challenge or a similar sort of architectural feature that they weren't willing to change yet and how they decorated around it to support the design style they were pursuing in their home. Leilani asks, what do you do when you get stuck in the design process for a room? Lots of ideas, analysis, paralysis. 
All right, Leilani, truth be told, I am so guilty of this. I'm constantly sourcing new information, whether I'm making videos, just researching the history of design as I commonly do just for fun. Uh, and I am always inundated with new things that I haven't thought of and ideas that I might want to try in our home. Two things I think focusing on is this practical for our real life? <laughs> That's a big one. The second one, putting it on paper, put together a mood board and see, does this work visually before I invest in purchasing or gutting or renovating anything? Recently, I got kind of obsessed with the idea of brick floors somewhere in our home. We don't have a mud room, which would be the obvious place to do something like that. And so, of course, I found some tutorials online, texted them to Travis, my fiance, and then about 10 minutes later, I was thinking to myself, that probably wouldn't be the best flooring choice for a kitchen or bathroom. It's not super easy to clean. It's not super easy to tell if it's clean and knowing my brain and how I like things clean, um, I just don't know that that is gonna be the right choice. Think about the practicality of your choices and think, does this make sense? Not just aesthetically, but does this make sense for our life? Another thing that I think really helps me to kind of talk myself off the crazy train is to make a mood board. Put down images that show things that I wanna keep in the room, some images of things that I'm hoping to add. It starts to make decisions feel a little bit more real instead of thinking about everything in my head and having way too many ideas. Committing those ideas to paper makes you have to decide, is this gonna work together? Is this gonna make sense? Jenny all Z time, that is a fantastic little social media handle, by the way. Jenny asks, does your significant other put a lot of input into decor? Mine does. Any tips on how to find common ground? So Travis, my fiance, generally trusts my vision and he's seen me make over spaces over the time that we've been living together in multiple homes now. And I run a lot of things by him and I think he generally trusts that my passion for design is going to lead us to somewhere that he will love to hang out, love to live. And usually that works out. Occasionally though, I'll show him something and he will have a big immediate reaction. When I showed him the Mario Bellini Camelianda sofa, very 70s sculptural, bubbly, postmodern, beautiful in my opinion, definitely a love it or hate it kind of piece of furniture and Travis definitely hates it. Sometimes, you know, when those things arise, when he has a big strong opinion, I really have to lean into that and think, okay, use this as an interesting challenge to work around. Because number one, we both live here. We both love our home. It's our home. It's not just my home anymore. And shifting from being single and designing everything myself to just support what I envisioned is very different from designing a home around our shared vision. And honestly, I like to think that the diversity of opinion makes the design stronger. Even though it's not always the thing I wanted to hear, I would have loved if he jumped up and down and said, comma, Leanda, that's it. Order it today. Of course, that would have been awesome. When he has opposition to something like that, it just pushes me to think more creatively, and find something that's really a true compromise. If the design world can shift and meld and put unexpected things together, you can too. You just have to figure out what's your core style, what's your partner's core style, and then what are elements that you can kind of blend them together to make your space feel functional, feel like your home represent both of you and make you both happy in the process. Next up, Jennifer asks, where do you begin when you don't know what your home style is? Oh my gosh, Jennifer. Jennifer, we've all been there. I certainly have. And it takes time to figure out what your style is. So my very next video, I'm gonna help you do just that. I'm calling it Find Your Design Style. I'm gonna be going over a framework for understanding the basic history of design, and I'm gonna be explaining 10 different interior design styles, give you a crash course in design styles so you can kind of start naming yours and do some more exploration as you plan your own interior design. I can't wait. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Next up, Thecla sent me a DM on Instagram Instagram full of photos of her living room, asking for some design advice as she's transitioning this space into a new design style. Thecla writes, hi, Lindsay. I would really appreciate if you can give me advice on how to modern up. 
Oh, this is such a great question. I have a million great ideas for this space. Right away, I'm noticing some great bones. We've got beautiful hardwood floors, a dramatic staircase. We've got long wood cabinet. I'm not sure if that's a built-in or a freestanding piece of furniture, but either way, it's a great spot for all your entertainment needs. You have a great foundation for modern. Your sectional sofa is neutral. It has clean lines. It's curvilinear. It's right on trend. Your red wing back chair is an unexpected pop of color. I was really excited to see that in there. Thecla. So definitely keep this. It's going to work great against the other modern elements of the room. Give you that little infusion of color without going overboard. Modern loves to do that unexpected little pop of color. Ooh, that's going to be gorgeous. I would probably start by painting all the walls one neutral color just to lighten, brighten the space and make it feel a little bit more cohesive. Because there's different wall colors going up the stairs versus on the walls, it's just a lot of visual information. And in the modern design aesthetic, we generally want to go a little bit more minimal, a little bit more calming, especially in the backdrop of our space. So I would suggest a kind of a warm, creamy white, maybe a Benjamin Moore Simply White. And in the next question, I'll be sharing a lot more paint colors, so stay tuned for that. Next, I would probably change out the light fixture. It's a bit traditional for the vibe you're going for. And a quick way to sell that modern aesthetic is to add a modern light fixture. I would probably go for something modern in a matte black with multi-arms that stretch out at length, providing a dramatic statement, height in the room, and also spreading some light around the room to brighten the space. Instant modern vibes. Uh, next, I noticed you don't have an area rug, and I think that would really make a huge difference. Grounding your living room seating area with a large rug, I'm guessing something like a 10 by 14 inch rug or a nine by 12 inch, inch. <laughs> I'm guessing something like a 10 by 14 foot or 9 by 12 foot rug will work best, but measure your space. Generally, you want to have about a foot or maximum two feet distance around a rug from the exterior walls of the seating area. Find something neutral and textural in a brighter tone than your floors. Your hardwoods do have a pretty dark finish on them, so brightening the space with a textural, neutral, brighter rug will help bounce some more light around the space. You might consider replacing the large, traditional, ornately framed mirror above the cabinet with a large scale piece of abstract artwork. Again, this is a really quick way to infuse your traditional space with a shot of modern. If the gallery wall is special to you and your family, I would suggest making it more modern and cohesive. Try copying all your photos in black and white and framing them all in a matching set of black frames with white mats. That will instantly make them look like an intentional set, eliminate visual clutter. Your sofa is the perfect modern backdrop for your design goals. I would suggest updating the sofa styling just a bit with maybe fewer larger pillows two or three larger scale pillows, 22 by 22 inch, for example, you'll get a cleaner, less cluttered look. You might also consider replacing the small table and traditional dining chairs on the side of the room with a pair of modern armchairs. Overall, I think your space is absolutely gorgeous. I think with a few tweaks here and there, you can really infuse it with some modern on a pretty decent budget and make a huge difference. Make sure you watch all the way to the end of the video for the most heartbreaking design question I think I've ever received and my hopefully hopeful answer. Next up, a really great question I got on one of my videos recently, how to decorate French modern. I'll leave that video for you down in the description box. E. Courtney W. asks, can you offer any advice on paint colors for this decor style? I'm building new 14 foot ceilings and I'm going for French modern decor, tall baseboards, yes. You guys know I'm obsessed with tall baseboards, but I want that monochrome look where baseboard, wall, and ceiling is all one color. I desperately need direction on white, off-white paint colors for this style, and Courtney, I have got it all for you. Way too many paint colors, probably. Designer after my own heart. I love, love, love the French modern design style. I love perusing Joseph Duran's inspiring designs for ideas. And one of the cornerstones of this style, as you mentioned, is a white or off-white overall wall color, including all walls, ceilings, baseboards, trim, doors, paneling, everything. Step one, you need to think about your design style, the mood that you want to create, and if that's a warm white or a cool white. And so much of this will matter most in your space. 
based on the lighting situation, time of day that you spend most in this room. So make sure that you test large sections in different color options. Paint a two by two foot or larger swatch on the wall in different areas of the space so that you can really see it morning and noon and night. Now let's get into my favorite wall colors. I'm gonna be sharing my favorite whites, warm whites. Let's talk about it. So everybody loves Benjamin Moore Simply White. It's Shay McGee's favorite wall color. She recommends it to everyone. It's a beautiful soft warm white and it works in almost every space. Another great warm white is Benjamin Moore Atrium White. It's a warm white with a slightly peachy undertone that leaves a room feeling bright and cheerful. Next, Benjamin Moore French Canvas. This one is a lovely off-white. It has more bisque tones. It gives a lot of warmth to a space while still reading overall white. Finally, warm white that you must consider, Sherwin-Williams Alabaster. It is one of the all-time favorite interior designer colors. I can name a million designers who've used this color. It's kind of a win-win pretty much in every space I've seen it in. My favorite neutral white, and actually the official white of our home, is Benjamin Moore Chantilly Lace. It truly is neutral. It's not overly warm. It's not overly cool. It's light, bright, and it works well in dark spaces. We're installing tall baseboards, panel molding, crown molding eventually, new doors, and it's my vision for a lot of these spaces that every surface other than the floors will be painted in this chantilly lace beautiful white moving into cool whites if that's your direction there's some really beautiful colors to explore benjamin moore snowfall white is a crisp icy white it's so beautiful without being overly blue toned another great cool white is dun edwards cool december definitely has a little bit more slightly blue gray leaning such a beautiful color and benjamin moore distant gray so gorgeous Finally, the most heartbreaking question I've ever received on this channel, but I'm hoping also the most hopeful opportunity for growth. Adriana writes, I keep trying to figure out how to decorate my house, but I never like any paintings. I hate throw pillows and blankets. My kid always puts them on the floor and I spend too much time putting them back. Anyone relate? I hate buying useless decor. All I have decorated so far is candles, plants, and some art I've made myself and a painting made by grandma. As much as I try, I hate all the decor I see in stores. Oh, Adriana, I, I, I think I speak for all of us, all of us design enthusiasts when I say we have all been there. I don't know if you've been there when it comes to home design or fashion design, but I've definitely walked into stores some years, some seasons and been like, I guess the Lindsay look is out this year. <laughs> can't find anything that I really respond to. And I think that's kind of where you're at. It's clear you haven't found your style yet. Haven't found anything in the interior design world that inspires you, excites you, and makes you want to try something new in your home. I wonder what stores you frequent, what is available to you in the town where you live, and if that's limiting what you're seeing. If we only cruise the limited options that are conveniently available to us, we might be quickly dismayed when nothing seems to fit our design style. With a few key mindset shifts, I strongly believe that you'll be off and running in your design exploration in no time. First. I will preach this to anyone who will listen. Like anything in life we're trying to learn and grow within, it's important to have a growth mindset. To remember that no one was born a great designer and the only way to figure out how to design your home is to take time to research, explore, and practice. Anyone can learn how to find their style and create a home they love. You just haven't figured that out yet and it's going to take some time and that's okay. Sharing your thoughts, asking your question, sharing your frustrations, that's a great first step. Second, you seem to know more about your design style than you might think. Hate throw pillows and blankets? You enjoy minimal styling. Hate buying useless decor? Again, minimalism de-emphasizes small scale styling pieces and puts more focus and emphasis on sculptural furniture pieces that make a statement. Started decorating with candles and artwork? You like a cozy home with a little bit of atmosphere. Try making some more art in your desired style. If you already had some great luck with that and you love what you're creating, keep going. You can even search up printable or handmade art pieces on Etsy for a quick change in any space. Plus you're supporting artists when you do that, so in my book it's a win-win. It's clear that you like things that are unique outside the box. Maybe hunting Target for the 10th time just isn't inspiring you. I would suggest 
getting away from those stores that you typically shop, whether that's online or in person. Think more about antique and vintage malls in your area, flea markets, thrift shops, finding those unique pieces that nobody else will have. Get out of the rut of where you typically shop by asking friends for store advice, or do a quick Yelp search for things like antique malls, vintage shops, modern furniture stores, and see what you find that you've never visited before in your city. Make the shift to abundance rather than scarcity. One thing I've learned from studying so many different interior design styles, movements throughout history, is that there truly is something for everyone in interior design. Every time I put out one of these videos sharing things that I like or things that are trending, everyone has a different opinion. Things I hate, people love. Things I love, people hate. Things I love, people thought of something else that's kind of like it and taught me something that I didn't know. There's so many different styles out there and one of the most exciting things is this idea of eclectic and hybrid styles, mixing interior design styles for your own unique look. So if you're not seeing what you like out there, maybe it's just because you haven't created it yet. Designing your home isn't always as easy as we'd like it to be. It takes research, dedication, a little bit of bravery, and a lot of positive self-talk as you confront and work through each new challenge. No matter where you're at in your design process, make sure you take time to appreciate the progress that you're making, even if it's a little bit small sometimes, and remind yourself that great design takes creativity, dedication, and more importantly, time. As always, these are my opinions, so don't forget to share yours in the comments down below. Like and subscribe for more interior design videos every single week here on Lindsay Living. Looking for some more design inspo? Why don't you check out this video on my biggest interior design regrets? I'm hoping my sad stories can save you some headaches, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, my friends. It's time to design, it's time to design. And vacuum. Vacuum.